by solving and by graphing. So we're going to graph like we did in unit five to check our work. All right. First thing I want you to do for me is define a function, and I will get you started. A relation where dot, dot, dot. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We are going to find the zeros, that means the solutions, for each of these quadratic functions, and then we're going to graph to check our work. So if I put this in standard form, what are my A, B, and C? Okay, A, uh-huh, good. So comparing this to the warm-up, what are we going to use as our solution strategy? Can we do square root or do we have to factor? We're going to have to factor. So, make the y a zero. What is our GCF? Or with a what? Good. Okay, now divide it out and what are the leftovers? 4x squared divided by 4x leaves us with an x plus 2. Good. Okay. So now that we've done factoring, um, now we're ready for the ZPP. So we do 4x equals 0. And x plus 2 equals 0? Zero? 0 and negative 2. Put them in curly brackets. Okay, the last thing I want you to write here is a prediction for our x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts are going to be points whose x-coordinates are our roots. So that would be a negative 2 with a 0 for the y and a 0 with a 0 for the y. Okay, so far so good. Okay, now you're going to hate me a little bit. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Does anybody remember how to find the H and K when we're in standard form? Starts with a negative B. Yeah. So H is the negative B over the 2A. So our B is 8. So we want negative 8 over 2 times the A, which is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. So what's negative 8 over 8? Negative 1. Okay, now we find the K by plugging that in, right? It's just input, output. The H is the input, the K is the output. So K equals 4 times our negative 1 squared plus 8 times our negative 1. You can put that all in the calculator. Don't forget the parentheses or you will be in a world of hurt, mathematically speaking. Did I get it right? Yes. Okay, so 
we know that our vertex is the point negative 1, negative 4. So you can kind of put that on there. It's at the very edge of my... All right, we know that the pattern for a quadratic when we graph from the vertex says if we go right or left 1, and we go up 1 because 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. Okay, our A value was 4. So we take our ups and we multiply by our A value, our 4. So 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 4 is 16, and 36, jeez louise. Okay, so let's graph that. From my vertex, I go right one up 4, left one up 4. I can't really get 16 because I have 4 and I have 10, but I can see that it would be like about right there. You know what I mean? It'd be two above where the grid ends. Okay, just do your best. Sorry, mine's a little warbly. Now, this is the part that I get really fired up about because I'm a nerd like that. Where do we cross the x-axis? <coughs> yes. So, when we have two x-intercepts, how many real solutions do we get? Two x intercepts mean we get two real solutions. So if you can put this in your calculator and see how many times it hits the x-axis and where, this is a really good strategy for checking your work in this unit because you get a calculator the entire time. Good, 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 good. All right, let's do another one. All right, what do we need to make the y value? Zero. What do you think? Square. Yeah, we can square root this and get our uh, squared part alone. So how do we get rid of that negative 2? Divide. Divide it, yeah. Divide both sides by negative 2 and that cancels. So we get 0 equals um, x minus 4 squared. It's a crazy looking x. Okay, how do we undo squaring? Try it on your calculator. Negative 2 divided by 0 would be undefined because it would be infinitely negative and infinitely large. Okay, so I'm going to do the square root, square root, plus minus. What is the square root of zero? Zero. Now I've set my free, set my x minus four free from its parentheses. Whoops. Now what? Yep, add four to both sides and I get x equals four. All 
Okay, this one is a little bit easier to graph because it's in vertex form if you think about it. What was our A value? Negative 2. And if it's in parentheses, is this an H or a K? H. Okay, be careful because H lies. And then what's the K? 0. So what is my vertex? H lies. 4. 0. Yeah. Okay, so the graphing pattern says 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. What is my A? Negative 2. So I'm going to take all of these and multiply them by negative 2. So that'll be negative 2, negative 8, uh, negative 18. So 4, 0 is here on the x-axis. And then I'm going to go right 1 down 2, left 1 down 2. Right 2 down 8, left 2 down 8. This one actually worked. The other one worked too, right? Yeah, it worked perfect. I don't know what you're talking about. It was just a lot of effort, but it worked. Okay, so. Um, I forgot to write the x-intercept over here. So the x-intercept would be 4 with a 0, right? So, how many x-intercepts? One x-intercept. How many real solutions? Good. One real solution. All right, we've done two. We've done one. What do you think is going to happen next? Yeah. It's like you're looking into a crystal ball. All right, let's see what none looks like. Yeah. All right, let's see why. Let's see why, though. So, what do we make the y? Zero. Okay. Can we get the squared part alone? Yeah. So let's try the square root method. Okay, we can subtract 3 from both sides and get negative 3 equals 3x squared. Divide both sides by 3. And that gives me a negative 1 equals x squared. How do we undo squaring? Square root. Square root. Square root. Square root plus minus. And it's at this point where it starts to look real weird. Tell me what is different about this than any problem that we have done so far. What? One does, it's just itself. The square root of one is one. But do we have one? We have a negative under that radical. Have we had that before? No. Okay, so what I want everybody to do is get out your calculator. And I want you to do the square root of negative 1. Non-real non answers. So this is telling us that we are not going to have real solutions to this problem. Our solutions are going to be what we call imaginary. And you won't really have to mess with them until you get to Algebra 2. But I wanted to tell you, like... What was going up? Yeah, what's going on? All right, so if we have a negative under the radical, then we have no real. 
solutions. Our solutions are going to be what we call imaginary. Now, because it says imaginary, it sounds like it's graph. All right, so think about this as being in a vertex form. Do you see that I have an A right there in front? What is the other three? Is that my H or my K? Because it's outside parentheses. I think I heard the right answer. Say it again. K. Okay, good. So what is my H? If I can't see it, what is it? Zero. Okay, so good. My vertex is zero, three. Okay, my pattern says one, one, two, four, not two, three, nine. What am I supposed to multiply by? All right, don't lose me. Stay with me. What are we multiplying by? Three. three. So that gives us a three, a 12, and the 27. All right, so 0, 3 is here. And then we can't really graph many of these points, but you can see definitively that this does not touch the x axis. So the final conclusion is that when we have no x intercepts, Okay, we get no real solutions. And now we know why. Because there aren't any real numbers that can make this equation true. It's just not possible. We would need imaginary numbers that we don't know about yet to make it work. Everybody happy? Yes. Okay.